Hey everyone and welcome to my channel Woodshop Junkies. In this video I'm going to try and revive these two old cordless drills I found in my shop or had laying around in my shop by supplying them from my wall socket. Uh, the reason I want to do this is because both the batteries are shot, they're not able to hold the charge anymore and in the case of the small drill the charge is not working either and the value of the drill really doesn't justify uh, replacing the batteries at retail. Um, for the value of two batteries or at the cost of two of these batteries I purchased this drill with batteries and a charger so it really isn't worth it. Um, I'd hate to throw tools away so I'm going to try and find a way to still use them. Uh, but before I start I just really want to emphasize if you have limited or no knowledge about electronics and electricity I would strongly advise staying away from this project or at the very least get someone knowledgeable to help you out. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so what I have here is a drill that gets supplied with a 14.4 volt battery and a drill that gets supplied with an 18 volt battery. But in actuality, these drills actually have a range in, in which they will operate. Uh, an example being the 14.4 volt battery fully charged, if you test it with a multimeter, should be in the region of about 15.5 volt, maybe even higher. And if you run the drill with that battery, it will keep running the drill until the battery reaches 13 volts, maybe even lower. Um, same can be said for the 18 volt. Uh, I've actually seen these drills being marketed in other countries as a 20 volt max, which refers to the 18 volt battery fully charged. Uh, if you test it, can be in the region of about 20 volts. So I know I've got a bit of a range that I can play up, play with. I don't have the uh, to match the voltage exactly to get the drill running. Um, and obviously it is DC I required. Um, my wall socket is 230 AC. I know in the States they have 120 AC. This is, the principle stays exactly the same. I need to get that 230 AC down to, for example, for this drill to 14.4 or in the region DC. To do this, I'm gonna use a power supply. Okay, so yeah, I have a number. I've got three power supplies. <clears throat> All of these power supplies put out 12 volts or 12 volt DC or in the region of 12 volts. Uh, the main difference between them is the amperages they put out. Now the problem with supplying my drill uh, from a wall socket is to is not so much to match the, the voltage but to match the current or supply enough current for the drill not to lose torque. Uh, so this would be, this is a 12 volt uh, power supply. So I would plug this into my wall socket and get 12 volts out here, but I'll only get one amp, which is going to be way too little. I've seen guys on YouTube um, do videos using power supplies like these. Uh, I don't know, judging by the videos, but I can't imagine that these drills having much torque. Uh, this is a fairly old one. Uh, it supplies about 13 volts and gives 3.6 amp, which in my opinion is still too little. I haven't done the math. But I venture, uh, if I had to venture, I guess it would still be too little. This is a more modern one. It's also a 12 volt power supply, um, and it can supply 4.5 amps. More towards what I want to be or where I want to be, but still don't think it's going to cut it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a way to put power from a wall socket through this power supply to my drill, see how it acts, um, but. If I had to venture my best guess, I don't think it will it will perform as well as I would like it to. Okay, so what I'm going to do to get the power from my power supply into my drill is I'm going to strip open this battery, um, strip out the, the, the cells inside and attach a wire to my positive, positive terminal and one to my negative, run that to my power supply and feed my power supply from my wall socket and see if my drill uh, it will run if it has enough torque to run. Uh, so if I had to open this drill, I mean, sorry, if the, this battery, this is what I would find inside. This is uh, for the 14.4 volt drill. This is 12 uh, NICAD cells. The NICAD cells 1.2 volt um, to make 14.4. Uh, in the case of the 18 volt, I would find 16 cells. Uh, just to show you the difference between the NICAD and the lithium, where a lithium cell has a 3.6 volt cell, so there's only three cells in here, makes a 10.8 volt battery, gets marketed as a 12 volt 
max fully charge it should reach, reach 12 volts. So I opened up the battery, took out the old cells, stripped out the terminal. This will just be inserted into, it, into this area there, pulled it out. And then it, very important is to mark your positive, sorry, this is positive and negative terminal because if you look on your power supply, you'll see you have a positive and a negative output. Your positive would go to your positive terminal, negative to your negative terminal. Uh, if you, um, this sat on there like this, red wire was attached there, red wire is a giveaway for a positive, but if you are not sure, you can check where these terminals go to the cells, your positive on your cell would be the one with the nipple that protrudes, and your flush side would be your negative. So if I strip this out, I'm going to take a wire, attach my uh, wire to my positive terminal, terminal, just solder it on there, and one to my negative, and run it to my power supply. If I've done this, this is what I would end up with. Uh, this terminal, after the, term, the wires were put on the terminal, I just glued it back in there with the glue gun. Um, and the best way to do it would be like this, close up the battery, have your wire at the bottom there. So you have a sealed unit, I'm going to leave it open just to show you uh, that there is no additional components to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the other end of this wire, put it into my power supply, run my power supply from a wall socket and see how the drill reacts. Okay, so what I did now is I took the largest power supply out of the three I have. I've connected my live and neutral, runs to a wire with a wall socket. I'm going to be plugging that into my wall. And then my positive and negative runs to my terminals that I've uh, attached these two wires to. Um, so if I plug this into my wall. Okay, so like I said, 230 AC supply side. So it should be in the region. It could be a bit lower or higher. Um, we'll just double check it so I can show you. 243. And on my output side, I've got 11.48. But this power supply actually does have a volt adjust button, which you can go about one or two volts up or down. Put it up, I get. 14.4 that's perfect that's exactly what I want but even though the drill will still run on 12 or even lower I will show you just now as well okay so if I pop this into my drill as you can see the drill is running take a plank and it drills the drill is running and it is drilling, but it still does not get the amount of amps it needs. At standstill, I can hold the drill. But if it picks up a main stem, as you can see it, it is suffering a bit. So if when your bit size starts increasing or your screw you try to drive, your, your drill is not going to cut it. In the case of the 18, you could use a power supply like this one, which is pretty much the same as this, except this is a 24 AC output, also with an ad adjustable voltage out, so you would just tune it down a bit. So as I said, um, fourteen point four. Drill is running. Put it down to eleven point four. Drill is still running. Okay, so I have this 
4.5 amp that will run my drill. I will be able to drill a smaller holes, drive smaller screws as you can see, but it's still not strong enough to run the drill to its full capacity. Um, this is what the, the guys or the videos I've seen have been using for power supplies this size or, or this size. Um, and this is not really a solution because this power supply, while well, this is an industrial one, I'm sure you can find uh, a domestic one with a lower cost, but this power supply costs as much as that drill, so it's not really worth it. Um, and if you weren't like me having it lying around in your shop, you wouldn't be able to, to run your drill anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make my own power supply um, and run the drill to its full capacity for cheaper than I would pay for, for this power supply. Okay, so I've got a power supply for each one of my drills, a 24 volt and a 12 volt for the 12 for the 14.4 and the 12, uh, the 24 for the 18. Um, they will run the drills. Uh, they will, the drills will just not work to their full capacity. Um, so if you are able to get your hands on a power supply for cheaper than, than a, a drill battery or a drill charger, go for it. Um, if you're like me and wouldn't be satisfied with, with torque loss due to the low current, you do have another option uh, which I'm going to show you next. Okay, what gives this power supply the ability to give me or to take in AC and give DC out at lower voltage is a transformer and a rectifier. This obviously has different uh, additional components in it, uh, safeties and overloads and kind of stuff like that, but I can show you if I take this 14.4 volt drilled charger, more or less what you will be looking for. You have a transformer, I just broke one of the wires off there by accident. You've got a transformer to take your, two, your, your 230 volt AC down to whatever the output vol uh, voltage of this transformer would be, in this case roughly 14.4 volt, maybe a bit more. That runs through a rectifier which is essentially four diodes for a bridge rectifier configuration. The rest of the circuit is the charging circuit. So I would just need four diodes and a transformer large enough to supply enough current to my drill to run it to its full capacity. I do have that, obviously, but unfortunately way overkill. This is a very, very large, this is a 600 VA transformer. Um, if you were doing this project at home, you wouldn't need such a large one. A um, 100 VA transformer should run the drill just fine. Uh, unfortunately, I've only got this big one, but I'm going to show you with this transformer what you need to do, and it will work out much cheaper than buying a power supply. So, if you look at the top of this transformer here, you can see this can actually, on the primary side, transform 240, 400, and 5 to 5 volts. You don't need that, you just need whatever voltage you are supplied with from your wall socket, in my case, 230 to 40, if you're in the States, 120. Um, on the output side, I've got 12 volts and 24 volts I can pull from this transformer, which is great because I can run my 14.4 volt drill with it and my 18 volt drill from this transformer. All I just need to do then after I get my, my 12 volt AC out of the transformer is rectify it. So the four diodes I just showed you guys, you can buy in a unit like this it is really inexpensive it's got the four diodes already arranged in the bridge arrangement uh, and this will trans uh, uh, rectify your AC output to DC so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire this up and show you how I run my drill with it okay so I've connected up my transformer here I've got my 230 AC coming in 240 AC <coughs> Uh, connected to my 12 volt terminals on my transformer so I've got 230 AC coming in, 12 volt AC coming out through my rectifier turns it into DC and the drill runs no problem um, it's got quite a bit of torque more or more torque you can just check um, the AC 
amps that I'm getting out of it or drawing from the transformer 3.2 AC um, under load it goes up to about 6.7 7.6 so just isolating the transformer and the rectifier that I need I don't need all that stuff that's in that power supply that makes it so expensive just using a transformer and a rectifier will run my drill just fine um, I'm drawing at most 7.8 amp from this transformer this transformer can supply up to 25 so this transformer is way overkill can get much much smaller transformer and run my drill with a rectifier and no torque loss. Same for the 18, I would just use the 24 volt tapping. So what I would go ahead and do now is I would take my transformer that I have and my rectifier, I would uh, build it into a box, maybe um, definitely add some uh, amp uh, overload protection to this part of the circuit, to the live of this circuit and the, the uh, live on this side of the circuit. Uh, just to protect my transformer and protect my tool and build it into a box, fit it to my wall, uh, close to my workbench, maybe even fit a, a, a female wall socket onto it, complete my drill, maybe put a male socket on the other side and I can just plug it in and have a, a drill to work with at my workbench. Uh, I've, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. I can run my drill off of my wall socket using a transformer and a rectifier or even the power supply. Um, is it really worth it? Well, for me it is. I had the spares laying around uh, to buy it and to make it. Maybe not so much. It's still not going to come cheap, but it will definitely be cheaper than buying new batteries. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like these, remember to subscribe. Uh, and I will see you guys soon.